Kelsey's seventh grade science class should now report to room 4F. Please use the outside stairwell. Mr. Nelson's seventh grade science class that taped yesterday should now report to room 4F. Dominic Willard and Michael Silva, please use the outside stairwell and report to room 4F. But it is kind of hard when they're trying to get the job. They'll be working. Then they'll add the water to the plate and the three wedges. To get the plate of water. The correct consistency. That's a nice thing. Now, take your baggie. 
All right? Take your baggie. Be all getting lucky. Okay, just like I'm doing, be sure to put the twisty back on the uh, on the tray. And you're gonna see that it'll begin to react. Once that happens, put that back on the tray. Okay, give it a few minutes. The baggie then is obviously giving off some kind of a gas. Put it on the tray, Cheddar. It's gonna envelop the baggie. It's gonna fill the baggie up with some kind of gas. A pencil or something to poke a hole in the top of the baggie, squeeze out whatever that gas is, and then you gotta re-weigh, re the baggie and, and uh, everything else. Watch out. It's all right. Just leave it alone. It's fine. But you know what? You got to leak. I'm going to tell you that right now. Oh, you already poked a hole in it? Okay. Now, now, go ahead. Lights on now. Remember, this is the boy. Hopefully, huh? Okay. Press the space bar as soon as the red light goes off. Okay. Just like we normally. Play night school. Okay. We'll work on night school. Return to select. All right. He tells you now. Welcome, traveler. All right. Uh, the uh, keys are going to be I. Character to moving down, and then go to the next room. You can let us I, J, K, right next to the lens as close as I can. So that, all right, now look in there. Okay, um, Jamal, you start. Because if we, we're going to you first, yeah. All right, just practice. Read through them one time. Love, 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 love,
And then we're going to pan over to um, Eddie. So Eddie, what you're going to do is you just turn the camera over to um, Cliff, okay? And then Cliff, I'm going to give you today's announcements. Swimmer, interested in participating in a middle school swim meet on Thursday, October 1st at 4 p.m. at Lynn Oaks Academy. Please call Coach Ruby in room 104. Of academic games participate pool in room 3F. Any study students interested in joining the art club, see Ms. Bordelon in 4D. Peter Kewitt, so you look, put your hand on the hand, look in the camera. As soon as I switch cue cards, okay? All right, you look in there and you give them a cue. Give me this hand. You got to go three, two, one, hit. Okay? But you don't talk. But it doesn't matter anyway. Just put her on Jamal. Okay, this is the way it would start. Yeah, just put her on Jamal. Um, do you over here? Yeah. 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 See, I got to run the radio in the. Okay. What? Wow. This is HCTV. Today is Tuesday, September 29th. Good morning. Please stand for the prayer pledge. And then we to become one big learning community in which everyone knows and cares about each other. Let us all join in the same glory. Be to the Lord. Participating in a middle school swim meet on Thursday, October 1st at 4 p.m. in Lynn Oaks Academy. Please see Coach Ruby in room 4, 104. Academic games practice today after school in room 3M. Any students interested in joining us? Results, how teachers use test sure. results, um, how students and even how parents use them. So what we want to do is talk a little bit about what you think test results are used for by teachers, by your parents, uh, and how you use them yourself as far as evaluating where you are in particular classes. So I'm going to throw it over to the discussion and you all can you know, just jump in whenever you like. What do you think your parents use your test results for? Like, the idea of completing the monitor. Okay. What is the design they on the test? What do they tell you? Um, so, do they say you must have studied for that test? How many of you all have that? You can bring an F home. You know? You, you laugh, but what, what does your dad say? Well, I'm not yes. sure that you didn't buy a study for it, too. Okay. How many of you, have, you know, really tried to do information, tried to study it, but you just really didn't understand it that well, and you know, did your best, but it wasn't, you know, an A or a B and B? Okay. You said she never said we had the new one. She said she never knew we had the old one. She never knew we had the old one. But then, she did, and I studied definitions because she talked to my mom on the phone at the board. She never told me about that. So, in other words, you studied one way for this particular test, and then when the test was given to you, it was asked, the information was asked in a different way. So, you did study, but you didn't get good results because you studied wrong. The definition? Mm -hmm. And then told me what the definition and how to say the word. So you have to know how you have to know how to define a word. They just give you the word, right. and you have, or if they give you a matching column with all the definitions, and you have to pick out the word that matches that definition. That's good. Learning. Okay. Give it back to the Okay. Do you ever think that the teachers have to use them to evaluate whether what they're teaching you is getting? And let's say if everybody in the class gets a particular question wrong on a certain concept. And what do you think as a teacher we would do? He'd go over it. Right. He, might, um, and then he might like have a bonus question or next test about this. Okay. In other words, if, uh, if the teacher you know, looks at the test and says, okay, everybody in the class got this question wrong, then there's a good chance they're going to go over and re-teach you know, re it. Next step. And, and, and like Paul said, maybe as a bonus. So that's, you know, teachers use that all the time. You know, it's not only a way of evaluating you, but evaluating themselves and seeing if they're teaching the information and the material that they have to teach and making sure that you all have it, too. But sometimes they might not even explain it to you. What's going like, the certain question everybody missed. Okay. So what you're saying is that some teachers maybe don't go back and reteach. 
No, I mean, I was going to say they didn't even, um, they barely even talked about some of the questions, that question that everybody missed. Oh, okay. And so when, when they give the test back and you all start saying, well, you know, the reason why so many people missed that particular question is because you really didn't teach that test. We didn't go over that in class. So that's a good way then. So the teacher knows that he has to go back and what? Teach that particular segment. Huh? And what about you all? How do you all use test results? Tell me how we do. Yeah. See you. Mm -hmm.
sent to the gym. The oldest surviving pearl necklace dates from 350 BC. What is the complete subject? Well, the oldest, look at your book, the oldest surviving pearl necklace. Okay, so look at the complete subject. You can go ahead. I never learned this the first time. Fine, just we need it. So if we have time, we'll get into simple subjects, okay? We'll, we'll be here in another couple of minutes. You can just keep going. The sentence fragments and complete sentences. <clears throat> You've learned that a sentence is a group of words expressing a complete thought. In order to express a complete thought, a sentence must have what in it? Can anybody tell me? Subject and a verb. A subject and a verb, okay? A complete predicate and a complete subject. All right, let's define the term uh, subject. Can anybody tell me what a subject is, Jerry? Subject. Something is being said. When we're looking for the complete subject in a sentence, what are the two questions? Can anybody tell me what are the two questions that we ask? Um, who, what, white. So Margaret Bork White is the complete subject in that sentence. Let's look at exercise number one. This gem has been treasured since earliest times. Can anyone tell me what is the complete subject? The oldest surviving pearl necklace. Right, the, earliest, the oldest surviving pearl necklace. Okay, number three. Romans wore pearls even at bedtime. Who wore pearls even at bedtime? Chris. Romans. All right, Romans. Number four. Their dreams. Their dreams, okay. Does anyone not understand what uh, is the most important word in the complete subject? It's who or what, again, is doing the action, but it signifies the most important word. Exercise four. Important word in the complete subject. What is the simple subject, Jay? Okay? Tales. Tales. It was a remarkable child. Davy was a remarkable child. Sentence number three. At eight, he weighed 200 pounds with his shoes off, his feet clean, and his stomach em empty. What is the simple subject? All right, key. Number four. In another story, a wild stallion ran for three days and three nights with Davy on his back. Who ran stallion? Okay. All right, let's look at number six. Did you know that Davy died at the Battle of the Alamo? First, that he would say, you did know that Davy died at the Battle of the Alamo, so you would be the simple subject. All right, let's look at number nine. In folk tales, the bigger-than-life hero rode his tame bear, Death Hug. Can anybody tell me what the complete subject would be in that sentence? Oh. Hero would be the
Make sure they're not looking when you're stealing their food. What do you think? A hearty soup. Tastes good. Goes you up. And to think, neighbors, it was made only of stones. Up. Make sure you're all in a straight line and get ready to bow. And now step back. Okay, you have to remember to fix it out. We have plenty of Do we want to uh, maybe have them? Pharisees. Once there was a rich man. He dressed in purple and linen and feasted splendidly every day. At his gate lay a beggar named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. Lazarus longed to eat the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. The dogs even came and licked his, his sores. 
eventually the beggar died. He was carried by angels to the bosom of Abraham. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Once there was a rich man who dressed in purple and linen and feasted splendidly every day. At his gate lay a beggar named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. Lazarus longed to eat the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. The dog Jesus came and licked his sores. Eventually the beggar died. He was carried by angels to the bosom of Mary. From the abode of the dead, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes resting in his bosom. He called out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to refresh my tongue, for I am tortured in these flames. My child, replied Abraham, remember that you were well off in your lifetime while Lazarus was in misery. Then the rich man said, Send him to my father's house, where I have him answered. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. No, but if someone would only go to them from the dead, they, they, then they to Moses and the prophets. They will not be conceived, even if one should rise from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. never seen these two this close. So who in the world did they see before coming to? Maybe the next. Maybe it was. Thank you. 